My name is Patricia Button, and I speak as one of the two original members of the Monarchs Court, uh, which was organized about 20 years ago. The other member is Jack Frill, who cannot be here tonight. I'm at the 65 Door Road in Yonkers, and Mr. Frill lives in Park House, uh, one of the oldest houses in Westchester County, which we landmarked. We're very proud of that. And we made him come to us, of course, when he wants to move or play something. And he doesn't mind it at all. Uh, can you hear me? Can you all hear me? It's really terrible. It's too sincere for me. Just disgraceful. Is there a microphone? I'll try to speak as loudly. Just tell me to kick it up if you need to. Well, I have a question. This is my question. Should one appointed board be given the power to diminish or eliminate the decisions of another appointed board? Is there appointed board? That doesn't seem right. The Landmark Preservation Board itself does not have the power to landmark. It only recommends sites as worthy of landmark. That means we decide only on the merits of the proposal, for which we are grateful. That's our mandate. On the other hand, the city council has a sometimes very tough job of weighing a landmark's possible economic or delaying effect on development against the long-range worth of the landmarking in cultural and historic prestige, prestige, even future tourism income to the city. When it faces these decisions, the city council does not operate unnoticed or unapproached either. If you know anything about Yonkers, you know the planning board has always had plenty of resources and plenty of interested parties to influence the city council in its decisions. There's nothing wrong with that, as long as the landmark preservation board is on equal footing and gives the applicant supporters the same opportunities before the council. With all due respect to the sponsors of this amendment, a charter revision would put another layer between the landmark board's recommendations and city government approval and could result in delays fatal to precious parts of this city's past, now lost as future mementos. It is our opinion that this requirement for planning board approval of landmark preservation board's decision <coughs> is not necessary and potentially dangerous for the future of any preservation in our city. It will give the planning board the power to prevent any landmark application from ever coming before the city council. The charter revision proposed before us tonight will also allow the planning board to override the expertise of the landmark board regarding aesthetic decisions and the acceptance or denial of a certificate of appropriateness. By allowing this, the planning board will have ultimate control I will of how the landmark of the historic district is altered in any way. This undermines the purpose for which the landmark board was created. Thank you very much.
You obviously have not read the current landmarks ordinance because it's not in the charter. It's in the code. And I think that this is an illegal move because I do not understand why in the charter there's no mention of any board. There's a planning bureau, there's economic development bureau, there's a planning commissioner, there is no mention of a board or its authority. You are taking a sliver of a ordinance, an administrative code matter, and you're trying to get into the charter. I find that really quite interesting, and I'm wondering what kind of legal counsel you're getting in order to do that. I also want to say that basically, this is, there is an opportunity for relief. There's no need to appeal to a planning board. The landmarks board will be happy to listen to a hardship argument. If you had read the landmarks ordinance, you might be aware of that. So this, this piece of legislation basically serves no purpose other than to not only undercut the future of landmarking in Yonkers, but to undercut all the success of the past. To put at risk this gentleman's $5 million home, to put at risk the Sherwood House, well not the Sherwood House, but I don't think it's even landmark. Manor Hall. Hall. Manor Hall. To put at risk Phillips <coughs> Manor Hall Historic District. And I really think that you must start to think very seriously about the implications of what you're considering here. And I hope that you're going to take these public hearing comments into full consideration. Because if you dare to release a report that says that most of the public was in agreement with this, I would find that also very shocking. That has also been done in the past by the school. And it's always done in the summer. It's like the dead of night, trying to get things by the public. And I really, I, I find, I would really, I know I'll never be reported to the board, but the first thing I would ask is, is, is it ethical that the corporation council is advising us? And is it ethical that the chairman of the board sits on the board of an organization that spoke vehemently against the landmark ordinance. Thank you.